All right, so welcome into uh, StylesRebelRadio.com. I'm uh, Jake Underwood, and I'm sitting here with Style. Yeah. He's, uh, you're the namesake of uh, Styles Rebel Radio. No. No? No, not me. Say your dad. It's Mr. Style. <laughs> Mr. Style. Yeah, senior. AJ? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, how long have we known each other? Five years? Four or five years? Wow. Yeah? All right. That's a long time. It's too long, actually. Yeah, I, I plan on cutting contact immediately <laughs> after this interview. Dude, that's I plan to do the same thing. We got well, so much in common. I'm glad we're on mutual ground. All right, so I do want to get into how we met, because I, I kind of okay. remember, but I don't. I know you kind of have a better recollection of it. But um, I want to start. I we, we know, obviously, you're in media now. But I want to know about before that and what led up to that point. So when were you born? <laughs> I was born in uh, 2000. They thought the world was ending. I know you feel old now. Uh, they thought the world was ending, but uh, it was just me. It, was, it didn't. Yeah. Um, I remember New Year of 2000. I was jumping on my mom's bed with my friend Tyler. I no longer speak to him. That's fine. But um, no. So, all right. So you were born in the year 2000. Yeah. How old were you when you like first remember like hearing radio? And, like, it's, so it's weird. Like, as much as I love radio and like the history of it and the lore of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a distinct memory of like, man, that's that's radio. This is talk radio. This is music radio. Or like, I like this guy. I heard this. Right. It was just it, more so for me, music growing up. Okay. Um, I think it was a lot with do with my dad. My dad was was always um, big into music, and he did the the very dad thing of being in the car and from like when I was three on being like who's this on the radio playing like yeah. that game right so like just from that i feel like i learned a lot about it um and then just the older i got the more i wanted to learn about music and like artists and how it's made and how it's written and what goes into a band and what goes into producing and things like that um and so i had this really obscure knowledge of music trivia that benefited me nowhere um and Radio to me, um, I was always a radio guy in the car. Yeah. I when I drove to school, when I drove to work, um, I'd always have the radio on. Very rarely, like there was a couple CDs I had that I'd go to. Um, and very rarely this was before the big like Bluetooth days, right? right? So very rarely did I pair my phone or have anything to pair my phone. Um but I always had like MMS on or ninety eight five on, um, always the rock stations. And I just remember in the mornings, I'd catch uh, the Alan Cox show, yep. going to school, and coming out, or sorry, in the mornings, I'd catch um, whatever was on 98.5 in the morning. They had a, a morning show that was half music, and coming home from school, I'd catch Alan Cox, because it was right uh, at the start of the second hour. Okay. Um, so I remember I'd hear that on the way home, and then it had to be my junior, senior year. It started really, probably my junior year started really clicking with me. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I listen to this every day on the way home, and I know the recurring bits and the people and the things like that. And it was something that my dad had listened to, and I, I heard it subconsciously growing up, but never sat down like, oh, I want to listen to, to 100.7, you know? Right. Um, it didn't, radio and media as a whole didn't uh, occur to me till my senior year. We had to do, for our big graduation thing, that was like half our grade, we had to do a senior job shadow. And so and so before this, there was really no you you really weren't thinking about getting into it or you just yeah. knew that you liked it. I was I was always someone that didn't have a career path in mind. Okay. Um, much to the dismay of everybody around me. Um there was a big joke. I remember in in elementary school when you'd all sit around and be like, It's it's career day, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? Everyone would say, Oh, fireman, police, astronaut, right? Yeah. And I remember it'd get to me and I genuinely didn't have an answer. Yeah. And I think probably third or fourth grade, I, I said I wanted to be an Elvis impersonator nice. and I got in trouble. Yeah. Like, that's, that's <laughs> really? not a, come wow. on, give a real answer. I'm like, wow. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, I never knew what I wanted to do. Um, as far as college goes, there's I, I contemplated being a lawyer and I'm like, I think everybody yeah. contemplates being a lawyer. It seems fun. It's a lot of work, so but it seems fun. I had thought about it for a little bit and I remember when I started at Tri-C, so this is right after high school, um, they do like a welcome to college class yeah. and it was taught by a counselor and the guy straight up the guy straight up tells us, he goes, yeah, you want to be a lawyer? Yeah. They make good money. You know what else they do? They have the highest career rate when it comes to suicide. And I'm like, 
well, I guess I don't want to be a lawyer. Well, you know, broadcasters aren't far behind. Though. <laughs> you, you know, alcoholics, drunks, and suicides. We're right, right. there. And so, divorce. Yeah. Yeah. We like divorce. So it's your senior year yeah. and it's career day for the last, for every year prior before that, you're going, I don't know. I want to be Elvis. Uh, I don't know what I want to be. It, it was, it was a thing of like, I just don't know what I want to do yet. I want to know, yeah. I knew I wanted to do music. Um, mm-hmm. And I knew that making music wasn't a viable money maker. It wasn't a viable career path to bank on. Right. Um, so I'm like, all right. I re- and, and as high school progressed, I'm like, I really need to find something to fucking like right. fall back on that I'm going to like. I'm like, I could go get a business degree. There's a lot you can do with a business degree. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but again, once I hit that four years, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. I just kind of have to hope something comes along. Right. Um, it was like two days before that we had to have mm-hmm. our all of our shit submitted for this. Okay. And, and basically what it was is you'd go somewhere for a week. You'd shadow the job you want to do. You'd interview the people. You'd write a report and you'd give a presentation and you graduate. Right. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I remember being like, there was one other person in my class that didn't know what they wanted to do. And they ended up like, shadowing a garbage man or something like that just because it was there good money uh, right surprisingly good money yeah um, and it's guaranteed work right it's always we're fun. telling you to become garbage men people honestly <laughs> that's the smarter career path i should have taken that um but no i i i remember going up to the teacher she called me to the back of the room and she's like listen you have to do this to pass what do you want to do we can help you find something i'm like and the word for word this is what i told her i'm like listen I don't know what I want to do. I want to make music. I can't shadow Bon Jovi. I don't know what to do here. Right. Um, did you cry a thousand rivers? <laughs> <laughs> I did, but I thought about, you know, someday it'll be Saturday night. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I said that to her and she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to find right. something. There's plenty of things with music. Yeah. Um, looking at producers or band directors or things like mm-hmm. that. I'm like, all right, whatever. Just I got to get this to graduate. Um, I remember sitting in study hall that day and just on my little Chromebook, looking up like jobs with music, jobs with music near me and all these producers were coming up and I'm like, I don't, I don't want to produce music. Like right. I already can't make it. So I'm not going to be the person that has to make other people's music. Right, right. So I'm like, that sucks. And I saw that iHeart was, was based five miles, not even from my yeah. school. Yeah, and I'm like, close. shit, that's okay. Well, I don't know how the fuck I'd, what I do or how I'd get in contact. So I literally looked up where iHeart was, went to their website, to their contact page, and emailed every single person I could. Yeah. I'm talking promotions, uh, program director, mm-hmm. um, sales. Uh, and the last person I messaged, um, emailed was was Alan Cox. And I'm like, it's a fucking long shot, but you know, he might check his email. Yeah. And I was just, hey, I'm I'm looking for a senior job shadow. I need this many hours. I don't know what I want to do. Radio seems like it could be it. Sent it, didn't expect to hear anything back, kept looking. Um, the next day, or two or three days went by, didn't get anything, didn't get anything. Mm-hmm. And the only person that replied to me was Alan Cox. Yeah. And he's like, hey, just read your email, talk to whoever the program director was The funniest was the thing is I could hear him go like, hey. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, honestly, that, right? Like, I, I literally, like, I saw his face like, hey, uh, if you want to come in, go on. I mean, uh, I don't know what you're going to do, but yeah. yeah, go on and come on in. And it was, it was such it was such a... Knowing him, and again, like, it's like we're best friends or anything, but knowing him yeah. like I do now, it's right. such an Alan Cox thing to do of yeah. like, hey, yeah, uh, so I, I talked to the PD, and <laughs> right. if you want to come in this day, this day, and this day, that's cool. Just get, let me know, and we can get you a pass. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, sweet, this is fucking cool. So right. I go, and I tell my teacher, I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to iHeart. Yeah. And the, the first day, I get there, and it's, it's the old building. You worked there. Yeah. <laughs> 6200 yeah there you go mm-hmm. and uh go in there and it's it's weird because you don't know what a radio station looks like if you've right. ever been to a radio station I'm like this is a weird office building am right. I in the right place yep um don't know what I expect it to look like but it's not this go up to the second floor third floor fourth fourth wow. yep. top floor yeah one of them I uh, go up to that the four and head on up yep hit the elevator and get out and I'm like yeah, this is this is what I expect the radio. Yep. As soon as you step out of that hallway. Oh, hold on. So you were there when the lobby was a lobby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the had the big, big the big red couch, the big the mural. Heart. Yeah. The oh. poster. Yeah. Uh, God, Van the Halen was days. playing when I stepped out. Yeah. Yeah. So I went and met the met the receptionist at the desk, um, who I actually knew from like family, which was weird. Um, yeah. And then yeah, I met Crystal. Uh, followed her around all day. Her Love and Pika. Crystal's awesome. Um, yeah. Just doing like sales and promotion stuff all day, pretty yeah. much. Um, set in with with someone in sales. They gave you they better that. training in your shadowing than I got. It's crazy because like and I worked there. Well, the entire time I'm there, they're like, "Hey, make sure you say you're not an intern because we just got in trouble for doing intern yeah, stuff." You're not, yeah. So I'm like, "All right, whatever." Right. Um. And yeah, so I, I shadowed promotions and stuff all day, and we, I did the calls when people won contests, come pick up their tickets. I right. did T-shirts, Promo things suite. like that. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um. 
So I'm like, okay, well, this is cool. And I, again, didn't know what to expect going yeah. there. So yeah. I got the tour, got to do this. I'm like, cool, I'll come in tomorrow, make some more calls. Easy mm-hmm. enough. Um, probably about an hour left uh, of me being there. I'm sitting there making calls and I don't remember who it is. Someone came down the hall. They're like, hey, uh, all right, w- we're ready for you if you want to come with me. I'm like, oh, do I have to leave? Like, I'm all right. Yeah, right. So they grab me and they, they walk me down the hall past all the studios to the to the MMS studio. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, you're going to go on with Alan if that's okay. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, just, I'm thinking like sit in, listen to the show. Right, right. right. So they put me in the, the studio with Pound Cake and... Yeah. It, and it didn't. It still didn't click with me that he wanted me to be on the show. Right. Um. And he, they put me in the studio, and probably going out of a commercial break, maybe like one ad spot left. And Pound Cake looks at me. and goes, "Did you? Did you bring headphones?" I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Well, you can use mine." He gives me his headphones. So real quick, and, for boom. people who don't know the way that the studio was set yeah. up at the old place. So it, look, look at look at my side here. So there was this little studio, and then you would have the talk tank, and it was all connected by a window. So. You know, the host could look and they could see you and you could look back and see the host just so they yeah. can picture it in their head. Go on. Yeah. And then they, they brought me in. Didn't know. I, it must have been terrible radio. It must have been God awful radio. This <laughs> the first time year it old. usually is, man. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Here's the 17 year old high school kid who yeah. doesn't know he's even going to be on radio and they bring me in and it was real basic stuff. Mm-hmm. He had other guests that day, obviously. And it was a little 15 minute spot of just like, hey, what are you doing here? Where are you from? Why are you yeah. here? You know, things yeah. like that. Uh, I remember the the peak of it was that uh, I went to the Kaga Heights, the Redskins, and they made this whole bit about how our school was racist, and they asked me if yeah. there were there were anybody but white people there, and the way that they phrased it was was it is it what kind of what kind of students go there? <laughs> and Pound Cake looks at me and goes, "Are they like me?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Maybe three. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was fun, and then did all that, uh, got to meet. The, as as cool as that was, right, and I, I can never, um, probably to the day I die, I'll probably never be able to thank Alan enough for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, but meeting him, I got to hang out with Corey the next day, Corey Roddick, which yep. going in in the mornings, if I wasn't listening to, to 98, I'd listen to Corey in the mornings doing traffic. Right. And so I'm like, oh, shit, I know that voice. I know that name. Okay. Yeah. And he was really fucking cool. That's We're good friends dude, now. Man. Yeah. That's a good dude. Yeah. I, so cool, man. Um, if you ever get a chance to go see Speed Rail, go see Speed Rail. And real quick, I don't I don't think Corey knows that you and I know each other. Really? Yeah. I haven't brought it up to him. Huh. Just because I never think of it. Yeah. So eventually that will happen. It's going to be a fun there's, conversation. It's just going to be like, a, <laughs> wait a second. Like, like he's going to listen to an episode of Off Air and be like, well, I know two of these people. <laughs> Where's that other voice? Right. Um, but yeah, I got to meet him and he showed me about like cutting tracks and how to voice track things. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. So with that experience- yeah. So did you, eventually you went to OMS, obviously. Yeah. And so was that right out of high school? I Was, was there like a lull in between? Or? So so I, what really cemented it for me, um, the end of those three days, I got to hang out with Jason Carr, who at the time was was running uh, Alt-99. Yeah. And really fucking cool dude. Honestly, like kind of set me into this path of like, here's all the other things you can do. Real quick, you know what's crazy about that? is that Rachel Carr, yeah. his wife, was the one who gave me the chance to do voiceover stuff Dude, they're and commercials. Good they are. They those are those are two very good people that if they see that you have passion, yeah, they'll give you a chance. But go on. Yeah. Just it, it's it's crazy that it's it's connected right. like that. But go on. Um but yeah, it, it, it's that afternoon I spent with him of just like everything I had already seen. I'd been on air, I'd seen how to do voice tracking, I'd seen how to build a show. Right. And then he showed me, oh, well, this is the other side of how things get produced, how you actually set up a format, how things like this go, and you can voice act, and there's this, this, and this. I'm like, that's not out of the realm of possibility. Right. Like, I could do that. Um, and so after that, I'm like, yeah, I, could. I remember driving home that day on my last day there, and it was weird because I didn't have the badge anymore. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. I yeah. can't just go back in there. Uh huh. Um, and I'm like, I, that's, that's a feeling I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you few, sh- you should know it a few times. <laughs> but, um, right. But yeah, I'm like, that's that's something really cool that I could see myself doing. Right. Um. Then you start doing obviously the research into like, well, where do you go to learn broadcasting? Mm-hmm. Go and I a lot of radio. I guess I just realized what led me to it is just where I was. Right. I was in Valley View, um, which is two three minutes away from Independence which for some reason was a radio hub. Um, so like they had their school there, they had iHeart there, Salem's yeah. there, like never knew all these places are there. Um, 
So I'm I like, look, look at the school, Center for Broadcasting, right? I'm like, okay, that's cool. I took a year off from high school. Okay. Um, so what did you do in that year? I I had to leave home at 17. Okay. Um, I graduated in, I think, like May 7th or May 9th, something like that. Mm-hmm. My dad sold his house, and we had to be out by, like, the 5th. Um, they got that extension to, like, the day after I graduated. Yeah. So, like, graduated, had the, the little get-together that night, and the next day I had to, like, pack up my things and go. I gotcha. Um, I was 17. I'm like, where the fuck do you, who's going to get me a place at 17? Right, right. Um, found the place that I was staying at at Parma. I'm like, listen, I have this much for a down payment. Um, I'll have the rest at this time. I just need somewhere to go. I, I don't have, you know, I have to be out by this day. I'm graduating right. this day. Right. So they worked with me. I got that place. So I got myself an apartment. Um, I, I just kind of figured out how to be an adult, which I, if I give any advice. Which when, I'm, when it when it comes quick, it comes quick. Right? Yeah. Like there, there's no in between. It's like zero to sit. Boom. It's yeah. Right oh, there. yeah. And you're going, oh. Oh shit! Here we go. It's like oh shit! No, I have to turn on the electric. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, and the biggest thing I always tell, I tell my younger cousin this all the time, and anyone who's going through high school or anything like that, take right. take that gap year. Don't definitely. N- number one, I'm not the biggest advocate for college. Um, but number two, like that gap year of learning. Okay, you're not a kid in high school anymore. You have to be a functioning member of society and be an adult. That's that's vital. Right. Um, so I take that gap year, and then the next July. Um, I rolled in uh, OMS. So when you went to OMS, yeah, what was the goal? Broadcasting. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't know that they did other things other than radio. Well, no. So what I mean, so it so you went there with the intention of radio. I wanted that to was... be an on-air host on okay. a rock station. Okay. Um, that's that's what I've always wanted to be. It's what I'm still working towards. Um, and and again, like I showed up there, they give you the the fake little audition where you read uh-huh. lines, right? Uh, and and how upset were you when you found out that everybody got a ten? It was funny. It was funny. I remember I remember doing that, right? And I'm, I think I thought it was weird at the start. I'm like, maybe yeah. this is just a thing that I don't know about, right? right. I'm fucking I'm 18, so I, I well 19. I'm like, I do this. They give you a sheet of paper, and it's like a, an ad spot, right? And they have you read it in front of the the lady who does admissions. Mm-hmm. Um, who who do you have to read in front of? Lisa. That see same. Okay. Lisa was a sweetheart too. Lisa Lisa was a great woman. Yeah. Um. And so I read this paper, and they're like, "Oh, you did so well. You'd be." And obviously, it's just to get you in the door. Right. Um. But yeah, it was like a month after. Everyone, I heard people talking about like how well they did. I'm like, and you're like, wait a I'm second. I'm like, I think they just tell this to everyone, guys. <laughs> you're like, I got a ten on that. <laughs> so when you had the opportunity mm-hmm. to uh, really like, because I know for me going to the school, the big deal was you want to learn as much as possible. Yeah. But the moment that they go, hey, do you want to show? Yeah. Like that's a big deal. Yeah. Because that that's something that that you think of your entire like as soon as you know that you want to do it, uh-huh. now you have the chance to do it. What was the thought process at that point with that? Because a lot of people might not realize this. You were on the music station. They yes. do have a talk station. It's mostly sports, but you can talk. Yeah. But you did decide to go on what's called under uh, North Coast Underground. So why that over talk? So I was actually really fortunate um, in, in my time there. It was my second month there. Okay. Um, we're just getting to the second block of classes, like start of the second month. And it's for me... Um, and and the the one guy I had in my class, Jimmy Jimmy Smos, Sports Avenue. Okay, okay. Uh, we would always kind of buddy up after the first month of like, this stuff isn't necessarily hard yeah. to do. It's a lot to wrap your head around, but like once you get it down, it's it's not hard to do. Right. Um. And we were seemingly the only two that had that mindset. Okay. So we we're like, all right, well, let's just knock out our shit and we'll go have fun and we'll make spots and we'll right. do extra shit to learn. Right. Right. Um. I was very fortunate. We we had to do remote hours or, or service hours. Uh-huh. And the big one that I I do is bike night at Quaker State. Yes. Yep. Because it's right down the street and right. you go right after school and it's there. Cool. You get four hours. So I started doing bike nights and. It's and when you start, you don't know what the fuck to do. They don't they don't tell you. They're like, right. They're sponsors. Right. Go talk to them. Talk about what's yeah. here. I'm like, that's you're gonna do that every show. It's the go, same people. Go table to table. Right. right. Yeah. And so the first two shows we do that right, and it's hey, that right. bike's doing a burnout. Yeah, and and <laughs> you can't hear anything because there's motorcycles right. and you're they're, broadcasting. They're right behind you. Yeah. Right. Uh, you don't know the people you're there with because there right. are other students that are just showing up to do service. Right. Because they need the hours. Yeah. So I'm like, how do you put a show together on this? And I, I noticed couple people started coming week after week. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just 
keep doing this, right? right. We'll, we'll make our own show here. So we right. did like music lists when we, we did jazz, rock, R&B, pop, right? right? We started doing these and it was, it was, we were doing like one hit wonders or rock or songs from the 80s, something like that. And I just remember the guy who was there to set it up, um, pulling me aside after our first talk break, the bikes were going, he pulls me aside and goes, you know a lot about music. And he's like, did you research before you came out? I'm like, no, that's just, I don't know what to talk about. Real quick, and was this Ricky? This was not Ricky. Oh, okay. I'm like, I know, I, I don't know what to talk about. This is just something I can fall back onto and like these guys are picking it up. So we okay. just rolled with it. And he's like, well, I, I, I work for a station down the street. Would you like to come see a show sometime? Okay. Sure, right? So it turned out to be Shaggy. Uh, oh, with Wixie. very cool. Okay, and, all right. And so you know, I'm like, sweet. I get to go see a radio show. I'm right. two months into school. Wixie. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What, um, but I'm what, like, what could have been? I could walk down there and see <laughs> right. the studio, meet the the PD and everyone right. there, and that's right. yeah, cool, man. It's a fun time. Just fuck off, have a fun show, play right. 60s and 70s music. And on my way out, um, they're they're talking to me, asking me like what I was doing there, how I met Shaggy and everything, and. It, uh, playing in the background, he must have cued it up um, as he was on his way out, was Folsom Prison Blues. Nice. And it was specifically the live version from San Quentin. Okay. And I said that. I'm like, stopped conversation. I'm like, hey, is this the San Quentin version? He's like, yeah, you know that? I'm like, I just... How do you not? It was, it was, you know what I mean? Yeah. Though? Like, like it, how do you not? That's... Right. That, that song's... Right. It's, it's iconic. I'm like, yeah. well, I know it's the live version. I, I have a feeling it sounds like the San Quentin way. I was right. like, yeah. And so on my way out, they're like, would you want to do a show here? You know a lot about music. So they offered me a contract there. Okay. So I was my first show was actually uh, Wixie before I, I started on North Coast Underground because I did that when Bike Night finished. Okay. Uh, we took the time slot. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Which was a five-hour show. Real quick, I just want to bring up, we are in the prime of the conversation. This, <laughs> this is brought to you by Prime. What up, Logan Paul? That's uh, <laughs> Styles' favorite wrestler. I have, oh yeah, I have not had Prime. Have you tried Prime? I have. Is it good? They all taste like slushies. Okay, that's actually really good. Yeah, it's a little strong for me, but they all taste like slushies. So send this to Prime, and then they'll yeah, sponsor then we can, us. Yeah. Okay. And next time we do this, only and then, Prime. And then I'm a little hungry. God damn it. So we're gonna snap into a slim jim. Dig it. Um, so this is the monster size because this is this is um yeah. All right, so let's talk about how <laughs> that's the bit. There it yeah, is. Thank you. So you, you you start to get your feet underneath you a little bit. Yeah. Now I want to talk about your experience at the school because stuff with Wixie is cool, but yeah, we yeah. pretty much know what happened there. If you don't, so, you can look at my social media. It, right. Find it. Yeah, like that that's that's all pretty much out there. But I want to talk because I, I asked Jules about how you two met mm -hmm. and she told her side of the story yeah so now I need your side of the story because I was told that when she started as social media coordinator yeah you did not want her on the show it I was, was told you did not trust her because you did not know her yeah no that, that wasn't it <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay uh, all right so, so we're gonna, so we're gonna get to the fun. bottom of this okay no all so right. we had a looking back it's fine to think about now um but doing bike nights there was four people that showed up to do them every okay. week. And those are the four people that I'm like, all right, well, let's just do a show. Right. One of them was Jimmy. Jimmy couldn't do the show every week. So he was right. on every so often. So I'm like, all mm -hmm. right, well, we need a board op. Right. Got a board op. I was a host and I had a co-host, right? And it it was very formulaic of like, cool, we know how to play this, this, and this. Yeah, you, you know how to play off of each other. Yeah, right. it's the same formula every week. Right. And, and she started a, a block or two, a month or two after us. Mm -hmm. And... um. I don't remember how we met. I, I really don't. Um, it might have been a bike night. It might have been a show. Um, I feel like it would have been a bike night. It might have been because they they were really put like when you when you started with the bike night. There yeah. was that there was a, like that structure there. Mm -hmm. um, they really started to try to push people to go. Yeah, because they they were because people that, were showing up. <laughs> well, yeah, that and because that's when I was social media. Gotcha. And they were all about me going to that. And you didn't. Um, I didn't because yeah. I was trying to get photos of the night students because there are students that go there at night too <laughs> that pay just as much and shouldn't be ignored. But that's fine. Well, hey, and hey, I, I was there under the nights. We had a five hour show. Well, debatable. <laughs> but no, so because bike nights were what? They were Thursdays? Wednesdays. 
Okay, yeah. So, so I, our show has always been Wednesday. Okay, yeah, because I was, yeah, because I was um, Wednesday night night classes would have been going on, so I was always covering that. There you go. But okay, but yeah, but but I know that they were trying to get people out, so I'm assuming that's where like the initial hey yeah. how hey how are you I'm so and so. There's a good chance. Um, and then I don't remember. I, I, we were trying to find positions essentially because right. number one, there's only three mics in there. And right. it's a small, small studio. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it'd be cool, but I don't know what she'd do. Um, I'm like, we have a social media spot because I don't, I hate, still to this day, I hate social media right. posting. Like, it's not yeah. hard. It's just, you have to be consistent at it and right. it's annoying. Yeah. Um, so like, has, I'm like, what if she just did social media and she could like make the flyers and make posts and we'll do a Facebook live and she can answer the comments, right? right, right. Something like that. And that's evolved into an on-air spot when someone wasn't there mm-hmm. so i don't remember who someone missed a show and I'm like oh, we got someone to go on air right um yeah and, and it just kind of evolved from there of like that and doing production work and things like that all right when when did you and i first meet it had to be somewhere like towards the end no was it was it the Jarrett and I sitting in with the ASMR? Because I feel like there was a time before that, unless it was just Jarrett was going to sit in, and then I joined him. There was two instances. Okay. Um, because I'd heard you on All Sports. Oh boy. Okay. Didn't know you. Yeah. Just knew the name. Mm-hmm. Um. Damn right you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't blow me away. To be fair. Hey, yeah. Which, by the way, fuck you for that question, <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> what uh, the hell was that? <laughs> Um, no, I'd, I'd heard you on all sports, yeah. just the name I knew. Um, and it was either the time you came on the show with Jarrett or it was college station day. Yeah. See those, I don't know which one came first. I don't know which one came first. I don't, I don't see myself just walking into a show that I don't know anybody on though. I want to say college station day was like two weeks before. And it was very much a thing of, I was still like relatively new. Yeah. Um, it was me and one other person that I knew mm. that got invited. Mm. And it was weird because it was like, it was a night class thing. Right. And Well, no, it was an all day thing. Uh, well, I didn't get so, invited to the day half. Well, no. So that that started that started at like 9 a.m. Mm. And so the way- Yeah, that, it would have because I did a couple of them. Because the way, the way that it started, it started with, I, I want to say it was Mac and Carter Relly. And then it went from Mark Warren and his brother yeah. until like 9 to noon. And then noon to three, I think, was a show we had called Triple Threat. Yeah. Then take three. And then from like six on, it was just me, Double A, and a bunch of the staff members sitting in there. And we were just bringing whoever we could. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was Double A who, like, as I was on my way out, was like, hey, we're doing a thing tonight. We're going to watch SmackDown. I think it was a Friday. Is that how he said it? Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> exactly. I'm not doing it Double A impression. Hey, hey. hey. Yeah. Hey, if you come in here real quick, we're going to do something real quick. He's like, <laughs> I heard you talking about wrestling. We're going to watch SmackDown. We're right. going to do this thing for College Station. If you want to come, I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Because um, at that point, it's very much, and it's still a good rule to have, but you got to know your own worth as well. It was very much a say yes to every opportunity. It definitely. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. all right, yeah, sure. College Station Day, I'll, I'll drive back out here, right? It's 25 minutes. So, so because, and I was trying to, when Shane and I were talking, I was trying to put the timeline together. When we would get, because like I, I explained in the gaming, I mean, mm-hmm. my God, we would play 2K from yeah. 7 p.m. Yeah. to 7 a.m. Yeah. Like two or three times a week sometimes. Was that before or after 2020 or was that during 2020? It's it's a weird blurry timeline. Yeah. Um, Because like I remember those two instances of meeting. I remember College Station Day and we really didn't talk that much. I really didn't talk a lot at all that night because I didn't right. know anyone. Right, right. Um, there was a Seinfeld bit. There was a Seinfeld bit. There and was then, an Andy Griffith bit. And then something about the Panthers. I remember you said you were a yeah. Panthers fan. And I said something like, you know what? I can respect that. Because I always like Jake DeLome. Always Jake DeLome guy. So I, I remember that. I don't remember why we hung out at your place for the first See, time. See, that I don't remember. I remember Station Day after that was we had a spot to fill because someone canceled. Right. Uh, Jarrett was supposed to come on to fill it and you were hanging out with him and I'm like, yeah, fucking both come on, whatever. Yeah. And then that was the, the day that they were doing construction in the room <laughs> next door. And we did ASMR. And we did ASMR yeah. and, and we started kicking the wall. And, right. And yeah, so that was that was a fun that's, show. That's, and that's like the first time I actually spoke to you was on air. That, right. That That's when, that's what like, we both were like, oh, we're both assholes. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. You know? Like, okay. Yeah, because I can't remember 
and it's going it, to, it bothers me because I'll think about it sometimes because people will be like, well, how do you know him? Well, school. Oh. And then I'm like, when? Because after that, I don't remember ever like hanging out with you or like pretty much anything after yeah, that. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I remember, I'm trying to think because I remember when your guys' cars got stuck because Parma did not like to plow your street. And I remember I drove, yeah. I drove out there in my little Mazda. Yeah. And somehow made it down that road. Pushed the Honda out. Yeah. Yep. We, yeah, we pushed it. We got all the cars cleared out and then we cleared out your driveway. I remember that. But that had to be after. Yeah, because I wouldn't just, I mean, I like you, we're friends, but I'm not just going to, you know, randomly drive in a blizzard to go help somebody get out of a driveway. There was a, and I don't know how these link. There was a good three weeks maybe where, again, it was after after Station Day, after you came right. on. And it was very much still in the period of, I don't know anybody here and I'm going to be around these people for eight months. So I better like get used to these people of like finding people that like wrestling and me and, and someone else would play smackdown versus raw 2008 right all night long right like from fucking time we got off at five yeah. to the next morning at eight and we had to be there right would we'd stay up all night and play this game because we both knew it right? right um and that somehow transferred into playing 2k and i don't have the connection of when you came over to yeah, play because 2K. like i was i was telling shane about it and i'm like no you don't understand like we would play this to the point like style and i would have like 45 minute matches because yeah. we had the kick out like timed yeah. perfectly that we would know boom there it is kick out and like by the would... way 2k wrestling i know most people think oh 2K, yeah it's no not, yeah. no not basketball <laughs> jesus those games are terrible <laughs> um uh, yeah because i just i can't i can't make that connection of there... when it was it it might have been a pay-per-view maybe it was something like that because you you would have people over to yeah. watch the pay-per-views but it, it it was it definitely started like 2k 18 or 19 and we'd have these matches and we'd go out for smoke breaks after. Right. And it would always be like these in-depth like conversations about like, yeah. like we would just get to like beating each other with a chair that turned into a twisted heap. heap. And then we're and then we're sitting out on the back porch because I, I at that point I smoked like a freight yeah. train. I mean, I was like, like every a, 20 minutes. Yeah, I was like a pack and a half a day. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like chiefing down cigarettes, <laughs> putting them out in the little tiki bucket, yeah. whatever the hell they were. And yeah, we would just sit on this back porch. It'd be 30 degrees sometimes. Yeah. And we're just sitting out on the on your back porch and just BSing. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That's really how we got to know each other is just yeah. playing 2K and then bullshitting in between right. breaks. Like, yeah, like it's 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 very it's very strange to think about. Yeah. So let's fast forward to what I mean, what we're doing right now sure. with the with um stylesrebelradio.com. Yeah. How did that come about? It was time. Well, it wasn't time, but it was time for us to leave uh, yeah. North Coast. Yeah. Very famously, that's where the start of the show comes in. Mm -hmm. We were having a bit about the McRib, uh, and they had recently started renovating the studio, and yes. part of that was they took out the ceiling and never replaced it. Um, so you could hear everything, number one, over the speaker, but number two, just in the halls. So right. we had a, a shouting match about the McRib um, 20 minutes into the show. S three people who were ad administrative there kicked open the door like and i mean literally kicked yeah like boots to door mm -hmm. and yelled suspend the show stop the show take it off air you you're you got to get out of here yeah and so we're still live on air everyone hears this um so we go to commercial they're like we we got told there's a fist fight down here they were shouting we thought someone was getting hurt i'm like we're doing a show and we're all confused at this point right because like we're literally doing a show that's yeah, a bit yeah and they're like, oh, no, we, we can't have this. You have to go. So we signed off for the night, left, went to Denny's. Um, Denny's. Denny's. I had a lot of nights at Denny's. That might too. have been where. Maybe. You know what? That might be where. Because we, every went Friday. Went out to Denny's after Friday. Friday. And then were you ever part of the Uno games? I, I came right after the Uno games. Okay. But yeah, that was it. Because Fridays yeah. we used to watch SmackDown and yep. Adult Swim and then go to Denny's. Yeah, because we would we would do the Friday Night Football. Uh -huh. we would, then we would watch SmackDown. Yep, you'd meet us back at the school. Yep. And then, yep. And then, yeah. That and was then it. we would go to Denny's. Wow. But yeah, so we went to Denny's. Uh, the next week came by and I'm like, well, we're not going to do a show unless we get an apology. Right. Because um, they did say. Well, I remember because I got involved with this. If you remember, I, I was out of the school. I was working at iHeart. Yeah. And I was talking about this, and I was not the only iHeart yeah. employee to talk about it. Let me it. clarify. I was working at the school at the time. They had hired me as uh, assistant PD for North Coast right. and a, a, a IA. Yes. An instructor assistant. Right. Um, and basically, I was in charge of watching over North Coast doing air checks, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we did this bit. We get in trouble. And I'm like, well, I'm not going back on the air. Now, leading up to this, they had made us broadcast in a closet. 
They had made us broadcast from somebody's office because yep. they were busy in the studio only during our show. Right. Um, so this was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. I'm like, well, we're not going back on. I want an apology. We made posts on social media. They were like, hey, just so you know, if you were listening last night, this is what happened. The show got suspended. We were live on air. We don't know why. If you want right. to hear the show, you're going to have to talk to the administrative. Right. And they got really pissed about this. Like, you can't make posts discriminating the school like this. You work here. And is this a disgrace that you're, you're bringing students into this? To the point, like you said, where alumni were... People that I didn't even talk to or really right. know were commenting and messaging me and saying, hey, no, it's it's well, fucked up what they did. Yeah, some of those, they saw what I posted about yeah. it. And they're going, wait, is this real? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, this is what happened. And so the, even they're going, well, that's bullshit. They're paying to be there. They should right. be able to be on air. So then they started talking about it. And yeah. I think that that's what pissed off the, the higher ups that were there. They're not there anymore, obviously. For obvious reasons. But so uh, that next couple days or whatever, next couple weeks, we had a meeting. We had a meeting room that would go in like 30 minutes before the show every week. Yeah. Had a meeting. We're like, listen, we're not going back on. Um, so here's our options. At the time, we had two offers. We had one guy who was supposed to be starting a sports station that I don't think ever got off the ground. Okay. Uh, but he's like, hey, it's fucked up what happened. Would you like to come do a show here? You know, it's right. going to be sports. But you don't have to talk about sports. We had another offer from another instructor there um, who was leaving that month. And he's like, hey, I'm starting my own thing. It's going to be a website. We're going to have shows, videos. Um, we want to bring a show there because you guys are our draw. Um, but you'd have to tone back some of the content. We don't want people getting offended. You can't use some of the vernacular you're using. Right. You know, we have to tighten it up a little bit. And our third option was just to leave. Um, and I remember we, we I had it up there on the board. We had a creative meeting. And I'm like, listen, the smart thing to do would be to go with this guy who's starting his own thing and wants to put us on in a prime slot. But I don't want to sacrifice what our content is just to right. clean it up and not be us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, at that point... Let's just make our own site. Right. Um, we'll we'll make our own studio. We'll we'll recreate the North Coast studio. We'll do our own show. And that's what it started out as. And that's why it was Styles Rebel Radio. It wasn't so much just because I'm like, oh, this is the name I made it. Things like it was more so like, fuck you, I can just make my own. Right. Um so Styles Rebel Radio was supposed to be in my basement of Parma. I, I built a little studio down there and yeah. it only lasts like two weeks. And I'm like, I can't have sound down here mm -hmm. so i invested in getting audio equipment little by little and i'm like well we can't be on the radio right away the idea was always to get picked up by a station right um so i'm like i don't want to start a station i don't i don't have the the means to right now but we want to get picked up so we'll do a podcast and i hated podcasts i'm still not a podcast guy right um which is weird because i produce like nine of them right um <laughs> right. but but uh, we started a podcast. We're like, we'll do this. We'll, we'll work on refining and getting better and building a name and we'll mm -hmm. hopefully get picked up, uh, which after about a year and, and a couple co-hosts and a lot of guests and a lot of trial and error we did with CBW. Um, and, and it was immediate. Uh, obviously, I'd, I'd known Shaggy. We worked together at Wixie. We right. were buddies. Um, but it was something where he had been watching what we were doing and we do facebook lives when we went live we do the show um every wednesday it came out and it still does um but it was something of the fact that we built this very very small brand over this this year yeah um and it was hey we know you guys were a radio show would you like to come take a spot um we can work around your schedule whatever right, but right. you know do a slot here and that was probably the second month that the radio was up and how how long have you been with uh, CBW? Oh, wow. Um, doing this show, just about three years, I think. Okay. Maybe two and a half, three. Doing like all together, APD, web, social, things like that, two, because I, I was still at Wixie for some of it. Okay. So it's about three, three years total. Wow. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it's very strange because it's twenty twenty three. Well, it, like since twenty twenty, mm -hmm. it, it seems like time. Like our the way that we perceive time now is so skewed. It's just a concept of human perception. Yeah. Hey man, no, but like because we basically lost a year. Yeah, and so it's like time. Time is very strange. Um, so we'll start wrapping up here a little bit because we went over. I apologize. Yeah. So it it was just a minimum of thirty. Oh well, yeah. that's what I do. The bare minimum. No, so <clears throat> let me ask you this. Yeah. Because I, I think that when you were in high school, you were, I mean, it was a similar situation. Like, I, I knew I always wanted to do media. Didn't know I was going to start. I tried different things, you know. But a lot of the time, there is that pressure 
from, you know, administrators and other people going, Hey, you need to do this. You Mm -hmm. need to do, you know, so what would your advice be to that person? And I I don't expect you to be like philosophical or anything like that. Just what, what do you wish somebody would have told you back then uh, just to kind of like help you along? Um, you don't have to follow everybody's advice. The biggest takeaway, and I think you can agree, and I've talked to a lot of people that went to that broadcasting school, is it's a great place not because of what was taught, but because of the people you meet and what you can learn from them. There was plenty of classes and plenty of time that I spent there where I don't know why we're doing this. This isn't what I'm going to do. It doesn't seem like we're doing this right, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like anyone knows what's going on, but there was an equal amount of time of networking with, oh, you're on 102, you're on 98, you're on 1100. You know, it, it's these these people you meet and, and the little things they tell you. Um, I, I had people tell me when I started that, well, regardless if you're in radio or TV or whatever, you, you have to get used to writing every single day. And um, it's a good practice. You do have to write a right. lot. There's a lot you have to write, but it's not something where I sit down and make a personal blog about SmackDown every every Friday. Right, right. right. Um, which, don't get me wrong, blogs are a huge part of our, our site now. Um, but it, it's not something where... Oh, I wish I would have sat down and wrote more every day. It's yeah. it's the guys that are like, "Hey, I know they taught you how to do this demo, but here's how you put these effects on it to make it sound like yeah. a demo." Yep. Hey, when you send it out, don't say this word, say this instead. When you give out a number, do it this way. Um yeah, it, it's it's things like that of knowing who and what advice to take, finding the most credible source, I guess. All right, very good. Anything you want to add? StylesRebelRadio.com. Uh, you can get all of our social media links and all of our shows. You can get the link to the Discord as well. We're live 24-7, 365 yep. on there. You can chat with all of us there. Uh, you hear great shows in the mini cast like Off Air, Beyond Bounds, Pigeonhole. Uh, from a bunch of great, talented people. Um, honestly, though, like at the end of this, what I, I really just want to say is I, I couldn't be more thankful. Um, number one for the odd string of coincidental opportunities I've had, right. whether it be getting to, to be on the Alan Cox show or meet Corey or, or meet Jason just to the, the people I've met along the way. Like it's, it's, it's cool. That's the one thing people always ask me is about what, what is it that you, that's you like about radio aside from just radio? It's you meet cool people, yeah. whether, it, whether it's the people that are listeners that you meet just randomly, mm-hmm. or it's, or it's people that you, you work with or people that you get to work like with in a musical sense you yeah. know um i've emceed shows i i've done all this i've produced for hall of fame like legitimate hall of fame personalities yeah and it's it's just crazy the people I, i've got to meet along the way and the people i get to work with now i'm very fortunate to have a brand that i built my way and have it see it progress the way it did um you know we're not just struggling to get two listeners on a podcast anymore talking right. about uno right we're in the top 10 percent of most stream podcasts that's on right. spotify that's right we're we're twenty six thousand people on our website in our second year we're nine shows that we produce we're this network of people that's not just centralized in one location anymore we have a variety of content and it's really cool that i get to work with the people i do so what you're saying is um it's very Jeff Jarrett of you. It's my world. My world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, style. Can I do one more thing before yeah. I get out of here? Yeah. So when we were playing 2K. Oh, God. Okay. We, we, we talk about wrestling a lot. It's really yeah. how we got to know each other. And a lot of that is you, you'd sit and if you play this game for six hours at a time, night after night after night, you get tired of the soundtrack, right? Right. So we'd make our own on Spotify and put on the thing. Uh, There's always one song. And it seems very apropos for the end of the podcast. An interview podcast seems okay. very ap- apropos for the end of the show, right? Okay. And it goes, where, it goes where a little you going? like, uh, might, might think about Armageddon a little bit. Oh, Jesus Christ. When you go, uh, <laughs> the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 